Hey, what's up guys? We have something special for you today. This is our holiday gift guide. We get asked a lot of questions as far as what tooling we're using, what tooling we prefer, and what would make a good gift for somebody. So maybe you're buying a gift for a woodworker in your life, or you are a woodworker and you're buying a gift for yourself or someone else in the industry. We have a few different tools here today that range in price, so you'll be sure to find that perfect fit for the person you're buying for. So let's just dive right into it. One of my favorite tools here in the shop is a Japanese saw. These saws come in many different shapes and sizes. There are different blades for different applications. There are different tooth counts on these blades for different types of woods, etc. A super versatile tool here in the shop. They come in a ton of different sizes, as I had mentioned. They're pretty easy to break down and set up and don't let the small size fool you. These are incredibly sharp tools and they get the job done quite quickly. These saws are great for all different types of stuff. If you're hand cutting joinery in your shop, a nice Japanese saw is perfect for that. These saws actually cut on the pull stroke opposed to many traditional hand saws that cut on the push stroke. And we use these here in our shop for a lot of flush trimming, cutting areas that maybe a standard saw blade can't get to. We use these in our shop quite a bit. These types of saws can range anywhere from $15 to $80, um, and some maybe even a little bit higher. Really just depends on the type of saw you want and the brand that you're using. This here is one of my personal favorite brands, Tajima, and it even comes with this nice little carrying case. Not a lot of them do that, and it is a fairly affordable saw. I believe this one was maybe around $40. Next, we have one of my favorite layout tools. These are called saddle squares. They're made by woodpeckers. They come in a few different sizes in both inch and metric. I have a couple of these in a few different sizes as well as inch and metric. And these things are great for laying out joinery or just kind of doing a general layout of your pieces if you're making a story stick, anything like that. They have these small perforations in them. Usually at every 30 second of an inch, they're able to get pretty close to just about any measurement that you're looking for. So the way these work is you would put this here shoulder up against your workpiece, find the number that you're looking for, and with your mechanical pencil, draw your line sliding the saddle square down the length of your workpiece. Great for laying out, highly recommend these tools. There are several other brands that do make a similar type of square. You can find these from $30 for some of the small ones, up into just over 100 for some of the larger ones. So these can be found in probably a few other brands, but these Woodpeckers ones, they range in price from about $40 to just over 100 for some of the larger ones. Rolling right along, every cabinet maker needs a solid set of levels. This is my preferred level type. It is the R-beam levels from Stabila. And one of the nicest things about these levels is their construction. They're super durable. They're made for the harsher conditions of a job site. But here in the cabinet making world, we don't really have that kind of job site. So these tend to last a lot longer here. So a couple of my favorite features about the R-beam levels, on three sides, they have a completely flat edge. This means when you have your level up against a wall, or a cabinet, you can use that to draw your straight line. You don't have this rolled edge that makes it difficult to draw a straight line exactly where you want it. One of the other nice things is these particular levels are epoxy coated on all four sides. So in the cabinet making world, when we're putting a level up against a finished panel, we're not worrying about scratching it with the rough milled edge of some of the other levels that are out on the market. These here come in a bunch of different sizes. This one's the 24 inch. I believe they go up to a 96 inch and the price points probably range from about $100 to $300 per level. Or you could also get a pretty good deal for a kit that comes with multiple levels and a case. So keep an eye out for those as well. So some of the smaller items that really make my life easier as a cabinet maker are something like a stud finder. This one here is magnetic. You just simply run it along the wall until you catch a screw that is holding the board onto the stud giving you your stud locations. Very quick and easy method to find the studs, and these tools are only about $10. One of the other things that we've talked about on this show before that seem to get a lot of attention are these here clamps. They're called pinch dogs, and they're great for making butt joints. If you're gluing up something and you need to join two flat pieces and you can't quite clamp it, these here would get knocked into the workpiece and push that joint together nice and snug. 
So these here are great for both flat stock and moldings alike. And they do come in a bunch of different sizes and you can get these in the 10 to $20 range. And my last item here is a bit of a shameless plug. This is a Hive notebook. It's a notebook that I actually developed for cabinet makers like us. The paper in this notebook is actually made from stone, not trees, so it is eco-friendly. And the reason it's made for us is we got a ton of conversions in here, stuff that I'm using every day, and you are probably as well. So we have millimeter to inch conversions, um, square footage formulas, a ton of stuff here in this notebook. These do come in a few different sizes and they range from 18 to $24. Just about all these products can be found on Amazon or on their respective company's websites. We'll be sure to post the link below for all of these products, both on Amazon and on those company websites. And as always, thanks for watching. If you guys have any other recommendations, please drop them in the comments because I would love to see what you guys have to say. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.